Good afternoon, and welcome to today's episode of Catholicity with Mr. Norino for Friday, May 1st, 2020. Today, in our liturgical calendar, it is the feast day of St. Joseph the Worker, his memorial day. So we'll be looking at that fairly closely in our liturgical readings for today and praying in communion with St. Joseph. The beginning of May also reminds us of our mother, of Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin Mary. May is the month of Mary. A special prayer that we say, a devotional to Our Lady, is the Rosary. Everything's kind of getting tied together here because next Wednesday during Catholic Education Week, we will have a presentation for you from all over our district where you'll have an opportunity to pray the Rosary along with some very friendly faces, some people that you probably miss quite a bit. Uh, and, and as well, a submission from Brock LaBelle, who's in the grade 1-2 class at Sacred Heart School in, in Sulacote. Um, his teacher, Ms. Michelizzi, has sent us a, a picture of something that he is has been working on and he's pretty proud of. So uh, that's all coming at you in the next few minutes. Knowing that we are, as it were, on the eve of Catholic Education Week... Um, you would be interested to know that all of your teachers and EAs and ECEs are currently in possession of the links for all of our read-alouds, for all of our resources, for all of our prayer services, for the songs of Catholic Education Week. And if you want to check some of those out um, before you get to Monday, you can go, as we mentioned yesterday, to www.goodnewsforall.ca and you can click on the logo of this year's Catholic Education Week and you can check out some of the things that are ready to go already. So those read-alouds to help out with the the lessons that some of your, your teachers and EAs and ECEs will be working on with you, those will be ready as well. Um, so yeah, Catholic Education Week coming up on Monday. The month of Our Lady, May, celebrations to the Blessed Virgin Mary happening all over our diocese, all over the world in a very different way. So we are able to meditate and reflect on the gifts from our mother, and we are able to pray the rosary whenever we have time, if we want to be focused and, and meditative and really have a, a strong reflection, depending on the day of the week it is, with the, the mysteries of our church, whether they're the sorrowful mysteries on a specific day, or they're the glorious mysteries on a different day, or the luminous mysteries. And you can see here there is a guide as to which mysteries you would say from this particular website that I've listed at the bottom. So say the rosary and you can change it up every day of the week and uh, have a different experience and a different uh, a different base for your prayers but we are always we are always communing through our lady to the lord our god as we are talking about the rosary check this out here's a picture of a lego rosary sent in to us from Brock LaBelle who is in grade 2 in the 1 2 split in Miss Michelizzi's class at Sacred Heart School, so you can see here that uh, he's he's worked on on this. You can you can tell that it's divided into different sections, and and he he's understanding how the rosary is broken down. And he wanted me to make sure that you all know that they are in earth tones. So kind of putting together our our reflection, our our devotional to Mary, with having just celebrated Earth Day. So those those things coming together as stewards of the Catholic faith as stewards of our planet. Uh, very important, very great tie-in. So thanks for that, Brock. And uh, thanks to Mom for letting us show that today. And thanks to Ms. Michelizzi for passing that on. St. Joseph the Worker's Feast Day is celebrated on May 1st each year. The title, St. Joseph the Worker, was given to St. Joseph, patron of carpenters, builders, and all workers by Pope Pius XII in 1955. St. Joseph is also patron of the Universal Church of Christ on Earth. The dying, marriages, fatherhood, families, house sales, and finances. He's also an excellent example of humility and obedience. 
to the calling of God in his life. However, it is St. Joseph's patronage of workers that is one of his most illustrious titles, warranting a special feast day in his honor. St. Joseph was made a humble carpenter, was himself a humble carpenter who knew what it was to work hard, often for meager pay, in order to earn a living to support his wife and foster child. Though a hard worker, he knew poverty, and when presenting gifts at Jesus' presentation in the temple, it was the gift of the poor that St. Joseph presented to God, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And we know that from the Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 2, verse 24. Pope Pius wrote a prayer especially for today's great feast in our church. So, if you, uh, if you are comfortable with me adding this into the beginning of our liturgical service, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So, you can see me looking down and moving my mouse all over the place, keeping, keeping you guys in the focus, but definitely having all of our prayers ready to go. So let's begin our liturgy of the word with the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are all who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labor of your hands you shall eat. Blessed are you, and blessed will you be. O God, creator of all things, who laid down for the human race the law of work, graciously grant that by the example of St. Joseph and under his patronage, we may complete the works you set us to do and attain the rewards you promise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O glorious St. Joseph, model of all who are devoted to labor. Obtain for me the grace to work in the spirit of penance in expiation of my many sins, to work conscientiously by placing love of duty above my inclinations, to gratefully and joyously deem it an honor to employ and to develop by labor the gifts I have received from God, to work methodically, peacefully, and in moderation and patience without ever shrinking from it, through weariness or difficulty to work, above all with purity of intention and unselfishness, having unceasingly before my eyes death and the account I have to render of time lost, talents unused, good not done, and vain complacency in success so harmful to the work of God. All for Jesus, all for Mary, to imitate you, O Patriarch St. Joseph, this shall be my motto for life and eternity. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, that if we should find any man or women who belonged to the way, we might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey, as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, for they heard the voice, but could see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was unable to see, and he, either, he neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and ask the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is there praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, that he may regain his sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many sources about this man, what evil things he has done to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And here he has the authority from the chief priests to imprison all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go. 
For this man is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel, and I will show him what we have to suffer for my name. So Ananias went and entered the house, laying his hands on him, and said, Saul, my brother, the Lord has sent me. Jesus, who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, things like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. He got up, was baptized, and when he had he eaten, he recovered his strength. He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness towards us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen. Amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Just whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. These things he said while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we ask you, O Lord, humbly, that by St. Joseph's example, cherishing in our hearts the signs of your love, we may ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll see you Monday.